Hey, it's Sunday afternoon and it's rainy and cold in Oklahoma and I'm going to do something simple and very enjoyable. I'm going to make some braised cabbage using a recipe from another Israeli cookbook that I really love by Dina Sussman, Sababa. I've made this a few times and uh, it's the, the key thing with this is to get really good browning on the on the wedges of cabbage before you braise them in the oven and that's what gives it such a savory hearty quality it has no meat in it i'm going to use chicken stock you could use vegetable stock um, but it comes out just being really uh, savory and delicious has that almost you know like darkly cooked brussels sprouts kind of vibe uh, but it's super simple and you just take your two heads of cabbage and don't even cut the stem out. You're gonna need the stem actually. And uh, cut them into quarters. Oh, and I should turn the heat on. So, you know, medium high. And a good glug of olive oil like at least an eighth of a cup, probably more like a quarter of a cup. We're gonna finish the dish with more olive oil and butter too, so there will be more fat later on, but you definitely just want like full coverage of the bottom of the pan. The stem's gonna help hang on to the leaves so that they stay, you know, something. Like you can put it in a bowl and identify it as a wedge of cabbage instead of a pile of cabbage. Although a pile of cabbage is equally delicious. I've got some uh, chicken stock in here that I pulled out of the freezer that I'd made previously. Uh, there's also going to be some garlic and shallots. Like four shallots maybe, if I have four shallots. I do not. Just while the pan's heating up, we'll go ahead and get the garlic ready. I don't know, cabbage is probably something that most people don't think they want to eat, but I think it's probably because at least Americans don't eat a lot of cabbage made well. When I was a kid, my grandmother, my maternal, my paternal grandmother is from Poland and we would always have braised cabbage as part of our celebrations and stuff. It has a very homey vibe to me. All right, I think the pan is probably hot by now. I'm gonna try to get all of these in the pan, which would normally be verboten, but uh, since it's cabbage and not uh, meat, it's gonna kind of break down as it sits here and make its own room. I'm uh, going ahead and seasoning just the bottom of the pan itself, and that's gonna get into the, the seared side of the cabbage and I've made the mistake in the past of not using enough salt in this dish. This dish likes a good amount of salt and pepper. Try to get it to sit. 
seems a little hot. You don't want to like scorch it and burn it. You just want to get deep browning. All right, these last two we'll have to do on their own because there's just not enough room. These are just going to braise whole, which is another thing about this recipe that makes it super simple. You don't have to chop them. The big ones I'm going to cut in half. Small ones I'll just leave as they are. Take a look. My burner has a bit of a hot spot on the front corner here, so I'm just gonna turn the whole pan around. You can see that the olive oil kind of dried up, so I'm gonna add a little more. Looking good. Kind of turning them around to try to get, oh, that one's almost totally ready to flip. That one's ready to flip. Let's go ahead and flip these two. That one's ready to flip. Use just a little more time. I'm going to use this as a little platform for these, uh, the ones that I'll pull out and then put the fresh ones in. All right, I'm just going to come back when all the cabbage is browned and I'm ready to move to the next step. All right, I got the hood vent going because it was getting a bit smoky. I've got all these cabbage wedges about where I want them to be. The cut sides are all browned. I'm gonna pull them off. The recipe calls for just going ahead and like pouring all the liquids in, but um, I've got a big mess in my pan and I, I don't wanna have to scrub it later, so I'm gonna go ahead and deglaze it first with some of the chicken broth. Nope, it's steam. <laughs> Theo just asked me if that was smoke. And, uh... Steam can't burn the ceiling. And then some, uh, half a cup of wine. So half a cup of... Half a cup of chicken stock, half a cup of half a cup of wine. And this was really good. I feel bad about cooking with it. And I mean aside from making it easier to clean the pan later, 
all this stuff that's stuck to the pan is like the best part of the dish. Even though it looks all black and unappetizing, that's the caramelized cabbage. wish I had like a nylon brush. <laughs> yeah. Well hopefully this stuff will loosen up as it cooks and it won't leave me with a terrible mess. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the rest of this wine in. Definitely want a dry white wine, not a not a sweet one. Are you talking to me? Yeah. Almost. Like three. All right, that one's kind of crammed in there. And now we're just gonna tuck the garlic cloves and shallots in. Beetlejuice is not scary, come on. It's just like a Halloween movie. It's like scary stuff with like heads and heads and stuff like that. Like that, that's how uh, The recipe calls for thyme as well, but I just don't have any. It is nice if you have it, throw okay. some thyme in. Got a up to a boil and now I'm going to pop it into the oven which has already been preheated to 300 degrees. And it's going to cook for two to two and a half hours depending on how uh, melty you want the consistency. The more you cook it the less it will look like a wedge of cabbage but maybe the more delicious it will be unctuous man this is really not wanting to fit in there we go all right i'll see you in two and a half hours all right it's been about two and a half hours maybe a little bit longer um and i watched beetlejuice and that's a good movie if you haven't seen it in a long time Kind of amazing. I love Michael Keaton. It just looks incredible. And Alec Baldwin. Like, did you know that Alec Baldwin could even act like a nice guy? That's crazy. Didn't know he could do that. Ooh. Yeah, so that's... Looking pretty good. I'm going to try a fork on it. It should just go right through. Yeah. So this is, this is nice. Um, I'm, we have no like starch here, which is a no, no in my house. So we're going to make some, some toasts, some, uh, I don't know what you'd call them. Broiler toast. It's not really crostini. It's more like, do you ever do uh, toasts on your grill, you know, where you kind of lacquer up the bread with some oil and and uh, do that? That's, that's what I like to do. 
And I've got some bread that I baked a couple days ago. It's like a 20% whole wheat sourdough. And I'm gonna cut it pretty thick because I want it to be like crispy soft. These are huge slices, so I'm just gonna cut them into four. Need a pan. And some olive oil and salt and pepper. symmetry I'm just gonna do the top and by the time we turn it over the excess will have drained down to the bottom already anyway and a little bit of salt I'm gonna go with the flaky salt and some black pepper, kind of coarse. And I have the broiler on, we'll see if the fire is actually going. Yeah, and I've got it pretty, pretty close here. You can see, hopefully, it needs to be uh, babysat pretty heavily. I'll, I'll check back in like a minute and a half because it's pretty close to the fire. Um, the other thing we're going to need is, this isn't like a necessity for this dish, but if you happen to have the luxury of some creme fraiche, it is super delicious on this and pushes it into um, like a treat territory. Um, you can find this one uh, all over the place. Um, but you know, just some butter or olive oil drizzled, drizzled on top is also super tasty and maybe a little bit healthier if you're trying to chill on, on all that dairy fat. Um, just good olive oil. You can at least feel, feel like you're being better. Let's take a look. Not yet. Oh, the other thing we could get is some lemon slices. So when you're when you're pushing up the fat content of this dish and you fill it full of butter um, or creme fraiche, a little squeeze of lemon can help lighten it up a bit. could like fiddle out the lemon seeds. This is the kind of neurotic shit I do when I'm just waiting around for something to cook. If you're being really fancy with lemons, you can cut them like red lobster style. Look, I even left the fucking sticker on there. Oops. Um, you know, red lobster style where you, you cut it, you cut out the seed part entirely. That's fancy style. By fancy, I mean Red Lobster, the fanciest of all establishments. All right, nobody likes lemon seeds in their food. I don't know, actually. I feel like uh, there was this doll soup that was the starter at this Indian place I liked in DC that always had lemon seeds in the, in the soup. And it was kind of good. Maybe I should do it. So yeah, that's what I mean by uh, 
making it like grill toast. So it's almost charred. And we need some bowls. I don't really have like the best, I got cereal bowls that I could do. This would make it look fancier. But you always end up dripping something on the edge. I'll do it this way. And this is for the baby who will not eat any of this except for the toast. My first one is so adventurous and the second one eats nothing, like nothing at all. That's about the sweet spot. So it's like still super soft and fresh inside, but crispy. I'm into the crispy soft. Definitely want to seek out a couple of shallots and a couple of cloves of garlic. Those things are super tasty after their little hot, hot bath. Um, and then we're gonna double it up. And do just a little bit of salted butter. Oh, I also want to say, I forgot to tell you this, but <laughs> after I put it in initially, after we put it in the oven for the first time, I remembered that I didn't add salt at the end. So I opened it up and I, and I added salt and pepper. Um, so there's more salt in this than you saw me put in. Hopefully I nailed it. And just a dollop of that. And, and that. Yeah, so melted cabbage, braised cabbage. Uh, I'm ready to eat it. Actually, should I take a bite? Doing this all here. The light's no good there. Yeah, nailed the seasoning. Hmm. That is awesome. All right, we're going to eat. See you later.